the U.S. only provides CPI status 6 each month, which is theoretically an indicator of inflation. And it looks as if inflation is becoming worse and worse each month. Stocks are being hurt worse as a consequence of the Fed's ongoing need to respond by raising interest rates. What's happening? And are we entering a recession? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome to Finance Wisdom. In this video, we're going to talk about another recession coming 2022. If you're new to the channel, do like and subscribe to the channel. Before we begin, let's discuss what a recession is and when it occurs. Is it Drake who determines whether or not we are in a recession? A recession is often defined as two consecutive quarters of falling gross domestic product, or GDP, in an economy. GDP is the accepted metric used by nations to determine the overall worth of the goods and services they produce. Therefore, when GDP increases, it indicates that the economy is thriving. However, when GDP declines from quarter to quarter, it serves as a warning sign because it denotes that the economy is beginning to contract. As I previously stated, if we have experienced two consecutive quarters of declining GDP, then yes, technically, we are in a recession. The National Bureau of Economic Research, or ENBER, has however lately modified its current perspective. They have some discretion over whether or not to declare a recession, but they claim that they will only do so if the economy experiences a sharp fall that lasts for more than a month. For instance, the ENBER already categorized a period in March 2020, when lockdowns were in effect, as a recession, despite the fact that there hadn't yet been two consecutive quarters of dropping GDP. The interesting truth is that the recession ended up being the shortest one ever recorded. When was the last significant recession? The latest one, however, took place in 2008, during the height of the financial crisis. Most of us in our 20s were still quite inexperienced at the time, so we were not really old enough to understand what was happening. As a result, the following one, which is likely this one, was uncharted ground for all of us at the time. The U.S. GDP decreased by 4.3% between its peaks and traps, which, while it may not seem like much, is reportedly the biggest drop in GDP since the post-war period. It was known as the Great Recession and during a six-month -month period, stock markets dropped by a staggering 49%. That was mostly brought on by subprime mortgages, in which banks just gave loans to anybody who wanted to purchase a property, without actually caring about the person's credit score. What is a recession? And when was the last time something similar happened? What has just happened? Although many market experts and respected CEOs like James Morgan and Jeff Bezos anticipate a recession, the Enver hasn't officially declared if there is another recession coming 2022. This time, it's because the market is receiving far too much liquidity to withstand the last two years of worldwide lockdowns. Yes, we needed a boost back then to survive, but eventually there was simply so much money floating about that the economy essentially became overheated. As soon as limits were gone, people started traveling, purchasing a ton of goods, companies were earning a ton of money, and the economy began to overheat as they handed people more money and the stocks began to soar from 2020 through the end of 2021. Funny enough, although economic growth is something we all desire, it cannot occur so quickly since it would generate the inflation we are now seeing. Inflation soared once again as a result of the overheated economy. When monthly inflation rises to 7-8%, to 8%, it is no longer considered normal, and the central bank begins to intervene, of course, by raising interest rates in an effort to control it. As I indicated in the last video, when interest rates are hiked, spending declines, both among people and companies. Hopefully, this will result in lower expenditure, which would allow the economy to moderate a little. At the end of the day, they want to reduce inflation. But last July 24, 2022, the U.S. revealed that their headline inflation touched 8.6% year-over-year, which is the biggest rise we've seen in 40 years, after already raising interest rates a few times over the previous several months. The Fed increased interest rates by 0.75 right away in response. To once again, the fact that this is the largest change in interest rates the United States has experienced since 1994 demonstrates how frantic the Fed is to try and stop inflation. Prior to that, many investors anticipated a 0.5% increase, which is why the market suffered greatly over the last few weeks. 
However, after inflation statistics came out, everyone realized that the Fed had to increase interest rates even more. However, many still believe that the United States must enter a recession in order to stabilize inflation. They are hopeful that by swiftly rising interest rates, this would fix inflation sooner rather than later. You may have noticed that I am referring exclusively to the U.S. in this sentence. We all understand that the U.S. is an economic powerhouse and that if they have a recession, other nations would also be affected. Businesses are already beginning to fire workers, and some, like Coinbase, are even retracting employment offers before the men accept them. Is it time to freak out? If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Let's continue to talk about whether there will be another recession coming 2022. The first thing to understand is that, just like how stocks and cryptocurrencies have ups and downs and go through bull and bear markets, recessions are entirely natural and inevitable. The same is true of the economy. This will undoubtedly happen to us at least three times over the course of our lives, even though it's a difficult and unpleasant experience that none of us want to go through. In fact, recessions don't even last that long. Although it only lasted 16 months, the Great Recession of 2008 was the country's longest downturn since World War II. I understand that 16 months seems like a long time to you folks. We don't want to continue to watch our bags fall, and we don't want to see businesses in trouble, which leads to 16 months layoffs or reduced employment. It's been a while. These recessionary times are by no means comparable to economic peaks. The shortest cycle of economic growth we have ever had lasted 12 months, which is almost as long as the deepest recession after World War II. For instance, the most recent economic expansion we saw following the financial crisis lasted 129 months, or over 11 years. So for those of you who are freaking out about another recession coming 2022, because this is your first time experiencing a recession, all I can say is don't worry, since this is also my first time. On a personal level, it's always darkest before the dawn, and the economy will ultimately recover. The most crucial thing, in my opinion, that each and every individual should do with relation to their personal finances is to safeguard their rainy day money. These are the times when rainy day money truly shines. Yes, there are many who would argue that holding cash alone will reveal the effects of inflation. But when all is said and done, cash reigns supreme. We won't use Bitcoin or Amazon stock to pay for our rent, food, power, and other essentials. Only cash is accepted by people. We still need it, even if its worth is waning. In the worst situation, let's suppose we were fired by our employers. At least these rainy day funds can assist us get through it. I hope this doesn't happen. You may invest this money in extremely secure assets if you choose. Therefore, if you have a 6-month or 1-year rainy day fund and have discovered, you can go to investing. Since in my view, these are wonderful possibilities for us to multiply our wealth. I'm not sure when things will bottom out, but they have been taking a terrible beating lately, and several high-quality equities have already dropped more than 50%. On Monday, June 13, 2022, practically every single stop in the S&P 500 was in the red, which is an exceedingly unusual situation, given that the indices are only down 20-30%. to 30%. This is unusual since there are often winners in any market circumstance, and inflation and recession are no exception. Because of the high price of oil, businesses like those in the oil and gas sector will continue to prosper. But I suppose investors actually book out and sold every stock they had due to the fear of rising interest rates and high inflation rates. The S&P 500 stocks just plunged down a cliff so swiftly that our eyes couldn't even see it, according to their charts. They were observing extraordinarily negative sentiment in the stock market, as seen by the two consecutive days with gap downs and the subsequent gap down day. Like the well-known adage, buy when there's blood on the streets, even if the blood is your own, which we often hear people recite. You know, like I said, we never know when the bottom is, so just start dollar cost averaging. And you know, do it every single week, every single month, if you have the additional money. I wouldn't advise you to go all in, however. Because billionaires are built in bear markets, I would mostly likely invest more money during this time. One thing to keep in mind if you're one of those people who wants to sell everything and just purchase it back after the economy starts to improve and we've exceeded the recession, etc., I guess all I can say is that's not really a smart move. 
The reason for this is because often the stock market bottoms up before the economy. So what will happen is that, despite the fact that inflation rates are still high, the stock market will rise this time, rather than decline as we have seen in the past. This will be particularly clear in the best quality equities, which will be prepared to advance as soon as the bull market resumes. This occurs because investors are incredibly efficient and foresighted. And in my view, as soon as they see indications that the economy will begin to rebound within the next three to six months, they will begin pouring money back into the equities. They are only dropping at the moment because there is so much uncertainty. Uncertainty is the number one thing that investors detest, and we don't know whether the Fed can rein in inflation. So it seems like we're entering another recession coming 2022 in my view. Even while the word recession is only a technicality, economies are now really beginning to deteriorate. People are being fired, promises of employment are being withdrawn, and assets are being sold off indiscriminately. The only thing left to do at this point is to survive. Avoid trying to be too savvy with your money, particularly when it comes to investing and rainy day savings. If you know how to invest and have the money, keep adding to your rainy day fund. We've reached the end of another video, and thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something from this video. If you like this video, do give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. Thank you and goodbye.